Great. Uh, thanks for joining once again. Uh, hope you all are doing well. Uh, can I request someone uh, to start us off with a word of prayer, please? Anyone online can just uh, lead us in, in prayer, please. Wait, Francis, why don't you just start us with prayer? Thank you. Yeah, uh, I'm going to apologize in advance if you hear me sniffing a lot. Uh, the allergies are not helping. <laughs> so, <clears throat> great. Uh, well, I hope you all are doing well. Uh, we've been discussing about the holiness of God. We've completed chapter two in the last class on chapter two titled Holy, Holy, Holy. Uh, how He's thrice holy. Uh, there is no one like him. Uh, he speaks in holiness, right? So let's just quickly do a uh, a review of what we covered in the last class. Um, right? He's the holy one. Uh, we the first thing that we saw was that he is the holy one, like you know, the one, the one who is the most holy. Uh, right? He's thrice holy, as we saw in Isaiah chapter six and Revelation chapter four. Um, <clears throat> hey, good morning, Anand. <clears throat> His name is holy, uh, right? Uh, and we saw a bunch of scriptures uh, talking about that, from Psalm 30 to uh, Matthew chapter 6, is in the, in the manner that Jesus taught us to pray, uh, right? He says, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, right? Uh, so his kingdom, which is the second part of the prayer, it continues from there on. Those the first how the first two lines are a like petition, right? It's an address, like our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be your name, right? And then it goes into the petition: let your kingdom come, let your will be done, right? Um, so it goes on to say that uh, His kingdom will not come where His name is not hallowed, or where His name is not regarded as holy, right? So we looked at that, uh, and then. Another section where it says, when he speaks, he speaks in holiness. Right? I will rejoice, I will devise Shechem and measure out the valley of Sukkot. So God has spoken in his holiness, Psalm 60 says. And uh, Psalm 89, verse 35, I really like that verse. Uh, Once I have sworn by my holiness, I will not lie to David. Right? Think about this. We we'll ha we really have to think about the significance of God's word, isn't it? Um, so sometimes, or most of the times, uh, and uh, forgive me for repeating, uh, as Bible college students and as or as Christians or as someone who's been in the faith for so long, uh, it is uh, it is it's very easy for us to take this for granted, the word of God, right? Um, someone who is a being that cannot be confined who's infinite, right? Uh, who is immutable, who is eternal, uh, you know, has given us his word, right? Or, you know, and he is the word. That means so something that is so intangible has made, been made tangible for us and been limited and been confined to this book or 66 books, so to say. We'll have to treat it every, every single word, every single number, every comma, Every semicolon hyphen has to be treated like precious diamonds, um, right? Because um, it's his word. And so when we see, and you, when you ponder about this particular verse, uh, 
Psalm 89 verse 35, it says, once I have sworn by my holiness, he doesn't have to add the word holiness. He could have just said, I have sworn, I will not lie to David. Why does he need to ha add, I have sworn by my holiness? Uh, because there is a distinction, right? When we say God is holy, there is no one like him. He is set apart. There is none like him. It is his otherness. Like we saw a quote last week, right? By Sam Storms. He said, um, the holiness of God is his. It's his otherness. Like, you, there is nothing like him. Like, there's no one else like him. Right? So when he speaks, he speaks in holiness. When he moves, he moves in his holiness. Right? Everything that he does is holiness. Right? It is in his holiness he is grace, uh, graceful. It is in his holiness that he is merciful. It is in his holiness he is, uh, you know, just. Uh, it is in his holiness uh, everything else okay, uh, begins to, we begin to understand once we uh, begin to understand his holiness. Um, right? Holiness adorns his house, the scripture says. We looked at another section in Psalm 93, verse 5. Your testimonies are very true, very sure. Holiness adorns your house. Adorn meaning decorate, right? Uh, Nina gave a very uh, wonderful word last week. Is things that you use to decorate your house. Uh, right? And God's house is decorated with his holiness. <laughs> uh, isn't that awesome? Right, he adorns uh, holiness. Adorns his house. It, ev everywhere you look, it's holy. Um, right, and then he goes on to command and say, "I must be regarded as holy. I must be regarded as holy." And it is somewhere along these lines uh, where, again, as Christians have lost the regard for his holiness. I'll say that again. <laughs> it is because we have lost our regard for his holiness, we have made Christianity or ministry or churches as an area of business. Is uh, we treat a certain position like we would usually treat in a corporate place. Uh, if you have X, Y, and Z titles, uh, you know, and then pride sits on top of that, right? And arrogance comes on top, top on top of that. Um, you did not call me by my title, a reverend. Uh, you did not call me. You know, I have so many doctors. Why didn't you introduce me like that? Um, and um, you know, the, those are just a few examples. When things like that happens, pride comes in, arrogance seeps in, or entitlement, right, brews in. It's like I am so and so. So many districts are under me. I am the superintendent of uh, you know all of South India, whatever churches. This many churches are under me. So uh, I will only sit on the stage. I will only travel in a certain car. Okay, what I'm trying to say is that uh, is all of this enters in when we have no regard for His holiness. We have to be very careful. You and I have to be very, very careful. I'm talking about this, but that doesn't mean that it cannot happen to me. Right? It can very easily happen to me if I don't if I do not have any regard for his holiness. Right? And so uh, in as it says in Leviticus chapter 10, verse 3, by those who come near me, I must be regarded as holy. Those who come near me. That means those who want to come closer to him. And another scripture we saw was in parallel was James chapter 4, verse 8. It says, Draw near to God, yeah, to me, and he will draw near to you. So how do we draw near to him? With regards to his holiness. Right? Those who come near me must be regarded as holy. Okay? Um, so he is holy. Um, his atonement. So this last section of the book, uh, of chapter 2, which we saw was, which atonement makes us holy. Now, until that point, we see that everything about God is holy. From introduction to chapter 1, to a, chapter, a huge part of tap, chapter 2, you know, for his name is holy, he is, must be regarded as holy, his holiness adorns his house, uh, he's thrice holy, all of that. 
and now suddenly the perspective he, he, he it's kind of changing yes i am all of this but you know what i'm i'm teaching you about all of these things so that i also i want you to be like me as well yeah so i it's all of this is nice uh, this is who i am uh, but i'm teaching you i'm revealing all of this to you so that uh, you know you're my son and you're my daughter i want you to become like me i want you to be like me and so that's why his atonement makes us holy atonement is another word for reconciliation right he made a way for us with his blood he made a way and so uh, his blood cleanses us uh, the what jesus did for us on the cross um, and has made a way for us to enter into his presence with, with boldness isn't it yeah um, his blood his righteousness are access into his holiness okay what is it it's very simple but again we, we should we have to be very careful not to lose the significance right the wonder of it so it is what is it? it is blood and his righteousness gives our access into his holiness access right um it's, I mean, we've seen access cards. This is my access card <laughs> to the office. Right? If I swipe this, it lets me in. And so what we've been given is his blood and his righteousness. Right? So when we get to heaven, Peter stops us at the gate. He's like, hey, what brings you here? He's like, yeah, you see my access card? <laughs> uh, uh, but yeah, that's the beauty of it, right? Um, as we mentioned in the last class, we know what we've been forgiven. I hope so. But most of the times we forget what we have been given. Right? We know we've been forgiven, but we, Jesus just didn't forgive us. He also gave. He gave us his righteousness. Uh, and all of that is a wonder we cannot afford to lose. We cannot, we cannot afford to let go of, uh, you know, forget about all of that, and 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 you will only, we will only fail, the minute you take your eyes off the wonder of Jesus, because He is your righteousness, because He is your holiness, um, and if you take your eyes off Him, things begin to fall, pride seeps in, entitlement, arrogance, etc., uh, etc. Et right? Are you all with me? Yeah, um, so I know we've spoken about this. I'm just doing a quick review of all of this, what we did in the last class, because it is very, very important uh, to us. In the very last verse of the chapter 2 was in Second Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21. For he made him who knew no sin to be sin for us you can do the most cliche thing you can put your name there <laughs> that we might become the righteousness of god in him that that you nickel that you francis that you Sri, Sri Radha, me roshan uh right he he made him who knew no sin so that i can become righteousness of god so he in him are you with me All right um so God is just not holy and sitting on his holy throne uh, and, you know, uh, all of that is wonderful. But then he's made a way for us. He's given us access to his righteousness and to his holiness. All right. Yeah, all good. OK, great. Now let's move on to chapter three. His holiness in me. Okay, so he desires, God desires for his nature to be reproduced in us and to be revealed through us, okay? He desires for his nature to be reproduced in us and revealed through us. Okay. <laughs> Another covenant name uh, that God gave his people is Jehovah Makadesh, which means the Lord, your sanctifier. 
the Lord your sanctifier. Okay, um, we get the word sanctuary from this word, Latin word called sanctus, right? Uh, which means holy or uh, set apart or consecrated. Okay? When we say that the Lord is uh, your sanctifier, He's the one who makes us holy or consecrates us, who cleanses us, who purifies us. Okay, Jehovah Makadesh, that's His covenant name. That means he doesn't change. If he if he told the people of Israel back then that 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 he is their sanctifier, he hasn't changed now, because that's his covenant name, right? Jehovah Jireh, that's his covenant name. He is a provider. The Lord is my shepherd; I shall not want. Right? He provides. God shall supply all my needs according to His riches and glory. He shall supply. He will provide. That's what he does. That's his covenant name. He will, he will not change. Jehovah Rapha. He is our healer. Thank you. Right. I've been praying for my healing. I have not received it. I've prayed for hundreds of people for their healing. They have not received it. Does that change who he is? Yes. I am glad you all paid attention. A miracle and healing and deliverance class. Yes, he doesn't change. Same way, when we say that he is our sanctifier, Jehovah Makadesh, he doesn't change. Our weakness doesn't define, uh, you know, uh, his nature. Like, oh, I gave my life to Jesus. I keep falling down. I keep falling down. I'm sinful. How can he sanctify me? <laughs> that is different, isn't it? Okay, so the Lord, your sanctifier. Okay, why don't you say it? The Lord, my sanctifier. Okay, say it again. The Lord, my sanctifier. Okay, great. Let's look at a few verses now. Exodus chapter 31, verse 13. Exodus 31, verse 13. Speak also to the children of Israel, saying, Surely my Sabbaths you shall keep, for it is a sign between me and you throughout your generations that you may know that I am the Lord who sanctifies you. Okay, I am the Lord who sanctifies you. Leviticus 20, verse 8. And you shall keep my statues and perform them. I am the Lord who sanctifies you. Leviticus 22, 32. You shall not profane my holy name. It's another scripture we saw last class, right? When we saw that, uh, you know, his name, his holy, profane, the word profane is what? The root meaning of that. It means to wound, to damage or to puncture. Okay, that's the meaning of the word profane, right? So you shall not wound my holy name or puncture my holy name or tarnish uh, my holy name. I will, but I will be hallowed among the children of Israel. I am the Lord who sanctifies you. See the connection in that verse, guys. I mean, God is going from not profaning his holy name, and for he will be hallowed among the children of Israel. Okay, so his name is holy. That means he has to be regarded as holy. He will dwell in the middle of Israel. And as he dwells, then he says, I am your sanctifier. It's amazing, isn't it? Hey, Jehovah Makadesh, the Lord our sanctifier. Okay. Um, and so we see a, a bunch of things in the Old Testament, especially. Now, we look at a lot of things in the Old Testament, and then we will move on into the New Testament, and we see how uh, things kind of change. Okay. Um, so in the Old Testament, for example, you see in, as the, the tabernacle, uh, as well as so many other things, as mentioned in your notes, uh, God sanctified a lot of things. So um, the ground that Moses stood on, where he encounters, uh, where Moses encounters God, he says that's a holy ground because he's present. Right, um, holy Sabbath, a holy nation in Exodus 19, verse 6, a holy place, most holy place, holy garments, holy things, holy gifts, holy anointing oil, holy priests, 
holy incense, holy house, holy field, holy offering, holy tithe. Um, so everything that was done unto the Lord was set apart and marked as holy. Okay, uh, holy oil um, or holy incense, it which, which was set apart, it simply means the oil that was used in the sanctuary could not be used for anything else by anyone else. It is only for that purpose in the Lord's house to make sure that is used only there. Holy incense, I mean, when you read those scriptures when, uh, in Exodus chapter 30, when you read that full section, God is very clear. You have to use a certain spices, but you should not use the same spices to make an incense for yourself or someone else should not make it because this is set apart. This is sanctified. This is just for me. Okay, so it's not just the things like uh, the holy garments or holy anointing oil. Uh, what is interesting is it gets a little personal. He begins by saying in Exodus 19 verse 6, a holy nation. Actually, let's go to Exodus 19 if you will. Exodus 19 is uh, actually one of my favorite chapters, a, a very crucial chapter in the history of Israel. I'm having this little bit of this annoying thing, you know, where you feel like sneezing, but the sneeze, it's not coming. It's like... <laughs> I'm like, oh, okay, so, okay, let's focus. <laughs> Exodus chapter 19 at Mount Sinai, um, verse 3 onwards, actually let's read from verse 1. In the third month, after the Israelites left Egypt, okay, which month? Third month, okay. On the very day they came to the desert of Sinai, Sinai, whatever. After they set out from Rephidim, they entered the desert of Sinai. And Israel camped there in the desert in front of the mountain. Which mountain? Sinai. Very good. Then Moses went up to God. Huh, just like that, you know? <laughs> So Moses went up to God. Yeah, sure. He's just going up to meet with a friend, you know. So it's so cool. And the Lord called him from the mountain and said, This is what you are to say to the house of Jacob and what you are to tell the people of Israel. This is what he wants him to say. You yourself have seen what I did to Egypt and how I carried you on eagle's wings and brought you to very good, myself, underline that, or highlight that. Now, if you obey me fully and keep my covenant, then out of the all nations you will be my treasured possession. Although the whole earth is mine, you will be for me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. These are the words you are to speak to the Israelites. Um, verse 7, so Moses went back and summoned the elders of the people and said before them all the words the Lord had commanded him to speak. The people all responded together, we will do everything the Lord has said. So Moses brought their answer back to the Lord. They were just kind of lying when they said that we will do everything because, uh, okay, let's come down, let's fast forward another chapter, chapter 20, let's go down to verse 18. When the people saw the thunder and lightning and heard the trumpet and saw the mountain in smoke, they trembled with fear. They stayed at a distance and said to Moses, speak to us yourself and we will listen. But do not have God speak to us or we will die. Thank you. Okay, um, so the reason I said this is a very important chapter 19 and leading into verse tw chapter 20 is 
God's original heart, his desire uh, was the for entire nation of Israel to be holy and the entire nation of Israel to be kingdom of priests. It was not just the Le Levites who were uh, originally intended to be priests. God wanted the entire nation of Israel to be priests. And they began to, you know, draw a distance, saying, okay, you know, uh, we are very scared. We don't want to come close to him. Um, you know, this, this was like the beginning of them saying, you know, we like to be at a distance. Um, but you see God's heart, right? Is that he wanted the whole nation of Israel to be holy and a priest. Yeah, are you with me? Okay, so now that we've understood that everything what God wanted uh, as sanctified was holy, he set apart. And he wanted his people to be set apart. He did not want to share them with any other. He said, if you obey my commands, out of the, all the nations of the earth, you will be my treasured possession. So what God sets apart, as holy, he doesn't like to share. So it was not just the things like the oil, uh, which came much later, but it all started off with what? People. It's always been about people to God. Right? There's one recurring theme from Genesis to Revelation I will be your God, you will be my people. That's in all the books, in it, some books it says a little differently, but that's what it means. And it ends in Revelation. I will be your God, you will be my people. That means you are set apart for me. He's very furious and ferocious about holiness and, you know, that about us being set apart for him. He does not like to share. Isn't it? Okay, so let's move on. So, I, I, and I, I'm again use this example uh, for during weddings, the priests or pastors. We say it as uh, we have joined together, we've come, to, we've come together for this holy matrimony. Isn't it? Uh, holy matrimony is where the groom says that I am setting myself apart from all the other women in the world for you. And same thing about. The bride, where right? the bride comes and says, of all the men that I can have in the world, I'm setting myself apart for you. Yes? Um, when does it get defiled? When the marriage is not honored, right? When there is unfaithfulness or infidelity, etc., etc., isn't it? That's exactly what sin does. Are you with me, guys? Okay. So, uh, you now for us to know that God is a sanctifier, we need to also understand what has, what is He sanctifying us from. It's very important, right? From sin, how our sinful nature. Are you all with me? Are we all good? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Okay, uh, some more scriptures. Uh, Ezekiel chapter 22, verse 8 and verse 26. It's in your notes. Ezekiel 22, verse 8 and 26. You have despised my holy things and profaned my Sabbaths. Her priests have violated my law and profaned my holy things. They have not distinguished between the holy and unholy nor have they made known the difference between the unclean and the clean. And they have hidden their eyes from my Sabbaths, so that I am profaned among them. So the history, history of a people of Israel, when we look back, is that they sinned. They will repent, uh, and they will go back to God, and then they will sin again. Then they will repent, they will go back to God, there will be God's judgment, and they will sin, they will repent, they will go back to God. Okay, and so this is one of that, uh, those scenarios here. Um, is they, they despise the holy things of God, they profaned uh, his name. 
Now, all of this is happening in the Old Testament. In the Old Testament was, again, was one expression of how a, people lived a certain way, right? On the outside. Yeah, and in the New Testament, the emphasis changes from keeping the Sabbaths to feasts and places. Again, it comes back to people. It brings it back to that. Right? That's why the Pharisees were very uh, angry at uh, Jesus because uh, they were very religious. Right? It, it is, and that's what has become of today when we when we talk about holiness. It is. It has a very religious meaning to it now. What do I mean by that? Is white and white? White and white is considered to be uh, holy. Um, if anyone who is not of that is unholy. Uh, anyone with beard is definitely hundred percent holy, going to hell. Uh, <laughs> right? Uh, any jewelry? Gone. <laughs> uh, so, ladies, <laughs> uh, you know, we've reduced holiness to that religious thing. And, you know, it was the same kind of understanding what the, what the Pharisees and, and the Sadducees and all had is, I mean, they questioned uh, Jesus and his disciples, right? Hey, today is the Sabbath. Why are you eating? Right? They questioned. Uh, another question, famous question is, uh, I love this. They looked at Jesus and, and said, uh, we all fast, all our disciples fast, but we've never seen your disciples fast. You see that religious mentality. Right? Jesus responds amazingly. He said, why will they fast? I am with them. <laughs> so, why do we fast? I'm, I'm sure we've all today's fasting prayer, right? Uh, by the way, right? Why do we fast? We we fast for more of His presence, isn't it? So that He increases. We want more of Him, isn't it? Yes, no, maybe what? That's fine. But you, I'm trying to just make a point here. Is we we fast because we want more of Him, isn't it? Jesus went into the wilderness. He fasted for forty days, right? Um, and then now when we fast. Uh, one day, 21 days, 40 days, whatever is that we want more of him. Disciples had all of Jesus with them. <laughs> so, Jesus, you know, it's like, why do they need to fast? I am with them. The fullness, you know, of one of the sons of uh, Godhead is with them. But there will come a time where I will go away and then they will fast. Isn't it? Um, so, the sh there's a shift that is happening in the New Testament where it's just moved from the expressions on the outside where a community of people can see versus the posture of your heart. Right? The posture of your heart. And that's why we look into it a little bit um, in this section. So while the Old Testament emphasized externals and observances to demonstrate holiness, the New Testament emphasizes holiness of the heart. Holiness is empowered by God Himself in and through the believer. Okay, holiness is empowered by who? By God. It's not a certain. Uh, if you do a certain things, that you will be become holy. We have to get rid of that. Yes. We have to get rid of that uh, mentality. Um, yes, we have to live a certain way. Uh, that's what we're going to look at, uh, you know, in the next section. But one thing we have to become, get very clear is that uh, His work of holiness in us, or His work of sanctification in us, is not reduced to okay, a list of do's and don'ts. Am I making sense? We, we can't reduce it to a list of do's and don'ts. Okay, if you do certain things, you become holy. Right? If you don't do certain things, you don't. You know, it's we can't treat it like that anymore, right? In the New Testament, the emphasis of holiness is of the heart. That means it's on the inside. Like the man looks on the outside, but the but the Lord looks on the inside, right? Uh, so I mean, think about this. Even 
when we talk about the tabernacle of Moses, how do we always start talking? We, we start talking about it from the gates, the outer courts, inner courts, the holy place, and the most holy place. That's how we always talk, because the entrance is from the outside. But when God starts talking and giving, giving instructions to Moses from Exodus 25, he starts from the inside and then works his way to the outside. So it was always been about the inside, huh? Yeah, I was just it's the ark, Exodus 25. Yeah. Thanks, Prince. <laughs> hey, always, it's always about the inside. Right? And that is just being magnified and amplified in the New Testament. Okay, First Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 12 and 13. And may the Lord make you increase and abound in love to one another and to all, just as we do to you, so that he may establish your heart blameless in holiness. What is connected to that, blameless in holiness? May the Lord make you increase and abound in love to one another. So somehow love and holiness is connected. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. L love your neighbor as yourself. <laughs> okay. So that he may establish your hearts blameless in holiness before our God and Father at the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ with all his saints. Another scripture, 1 Thessalonians first, chapter 5, verse 23. Now may the God of peace himself sanctify you completely and may your whole spirit soul and body be preserved blameless at the coming of our lord jesus christ okay so when he sanctifies he sanctifies our whole being spirit soul and body i will be guess any questions so far let's pause here any thoughts any questions Okay, I hope uh, you are learning. Um, this something is being instilled in you. Looking for in the PDF, yeah, twenty six. Priests are holiness to the Lord. Exodus twenty eight, verse thirty six and thirty eight. Um, you shall also make a plate of pure gold and engrave on it like the engraving of a signet holiness to the Lord and you shall put it on the blue cord that it may be on the turban it shall be on the front of the turban verse 38 so it shall be on Aaron's forehead that Aaron may bear the iniquity of the holy things which the children of Israel hallow in their in all their holy gifts, and it shall always be on his forehead, that they may be accepted before the Lord. Okay, so what is God saying here? Verse 36. Make a, make a plate of pure gold, okay, and engrave on it, holiness. To the Lord. Okay, so now a plate by itself, what's the use of it? Is it holy? It's a thing. What was its purpose? Engraving on it. Yeah. And then it was put on Aaron. Forehead. Right? Indicating what? That the priest is set apart. The priest is the person is set apart. That the greatest judgments uh, for Israel during those times came when the priests didn't understand that they were set apart and they lived a very sinful way. Right? The sons of Eli in uh, First Samuel chapter 4, I think. Hophni and Phinehas. 
I think so. That's their name, right? It's Hophni and Phineas, right? Um, you know, they were, they were sons of Eli, priest, priest, priests of the temple, right? They did all sexual immorality, iniquity. They lived a, an evil way. Um, and they had a very judgmental death as well. So um, now that's the Old Testament. In the old covenant now from exodus 19 and 20 and then you know people of israel sin they built uh they made a golden calf for themselves you remember all that no <laughs> right and then there's this time where moses asks okay who is on the lord's side and only the levites came running to him only the Levites came running. So all see, guys, from Exodus 19 on, in all these small, small ways, it's you see how the story is changing or turning from the whole nation of being priests to only coming, uh, only the Levites becoming a priestly tribe, right? Uh, and I mean, God says, uh, okay, to the people, to the tribe of Dan, they get a certain land. To the tribe of Judah, they get this certain land. To the tribe uh, X, Y, and Z, they get this certain land. This is their position. This is their position. This is their position. When it came to Levites, Lev God says they don't get anything for I am their inheritance. Originally, God was the inheritance of the entire nation. While all the other tribes received land or possessions, uh, Levites did not receive anything materialistic, but the Lord Himself was their inheritance. Whoosh, right? And then the tribe of Levites has uh, is is been separated by three different clans. Uh, I'm not going to go into the details of it, like the Kohathites, the Merarites, and the Gershomites, and all of them had a certain uh, responsibility, right? Moses and Aaron, they come from the clan of the Kohathites. Okay? And so, all, I want you to listen to this. All high priests were Levites, but not all Levites were high priests. Let's say that again. All high priests were Levites, but not all Levites were high priests. Only those who descended from the line of the Kohath, or the, because Aaron is from the line of the Kohathites, right? And that's why, again, when you read uh, very, this famous passage uh, which we read in First Chronicles chapter twenty, uh, where Jehoshaphat goes into war, right? And uh, what do they do? They call the worshippers. But if you look very carefully, it says the Kohathites carried the Ark of the Covenant and came. Okay, they come from the clan, they're one of the clans of the tribe of Levites. Okay, Levi had three sons, and you know, so you get the point, right? Uh, all high priests were Levites, but not all Levites were high priests. But all of that is changing now. All of that is changing now. Okay, in Revelation chapter 1, uh, verse 5 and 6. And from Jesus Christ, the faithful witness, the firstborn from the dead, and the ruler over the kings of the earth, to him who loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood, and has made us kings and priests to his God and Father. We, in the new covenant, are priests holy and set apart unto the lord okay and one of the responsibilities as mentioned in ezekiel chapter 44 verse 23 ezekiel 44 verse 23 in your pdfs is page 27 it says and they shall teach my people the difference between the holy and the unholy the cause them to discern between the unclean and clean. This was the responsibility of the priests back then. Is to teach their people. And so, um, now that we are uh, priests, we are, all, we are royal priesthood, right? As uh, Peter says, 1 Peter chapter 5. 1 uh, Peter chapter 5, I think, or 2. 
um, we are all royal priesthood. Um, and so as his priest, we are set apart and we are holy. Okay, um, let's pause here. We'll uh, resume this class in the next se session. Okay, I take a quick break. I'll see you next time.